Well, hello there, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and it's episode number 192 of Goulet Q&A. And I'm pretty wired on this one because I'm leaving for a couple of days to go. Actually, by the time this by the time this publishes on Friday, I will be less than 24 hours away than my journey to Heidelberg, Germany, uh, where I'm going to go tour the Lamy factory. I'm pretty darn pumped about that. Uh, first thing I want to do is tell you that uh, if you happen to be in the Heidelberg area or somewhere near there, I'm looking to do a little pen meetup uh, in the Christmas market or somewhere near there. I'm not 100% sure. Still got to work out my itinerary a little bit, um, but I'm going to do a little pen meetup on Sunday at 4 o'clock, around 4 o'clock. So uh, <laughs> still got some details to work out, but if you happen to be in that general area, and you want to meet up with me, let me know. Um, the best way to do that is going to be through my Instagram handle. So go to brian.goulet on Instagram and shoot me a DM or just kind of watch my stories, watch my Instagram feed and see uh, the communication that I'm going to have through there. That's going to be the best way for me to do some real-time communication while I'm on the fly. I've never been to the area, so I don't know exactly where to say, like, yeah, meet up at this table, at this restaurant, at this whatever, um, and i got to see how many people are interested in doing it, too. I know I've had you know a handful that have expressed interest, and I want to be at the Christmas market anyway, so it's going to be pretty cool. And it's literally going to be snowing when I get there. It's going to be like I'm in a snow globe. It's, it's going to be awesome. I'm so pumped. I'm going to be so exhausted from my trip. It's like 18 hours of travel just for me to get there. I'm going to be a complete just puddle. Uh, and then it's going to be a couple of days of just hard-hitting uh, stuff. But I am going to be recording a lot of video when I get there. That's part of the reason why I'm going, uh, is to tour the Lamy factory and get to show you some stuff. So that's pretty exciting. It's going to take a while to cut all the footage together and stuff. But um, I've been talking with Andy. She's our new videographer. And uh, I've been strategizing a little bit. So I'm going to look to do... Um, you know, kind of a more formal interview style, but then also do like a little daily vlog type uh, style as well. If you're familiar with like uh, Casey Neistat or, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, sort of that, uh, you know, following uh, the journey of this trip. So I'm going to kind of be, uh, be uh, you know, uh, cataloging what my trip is like. So it should be fun. Uh, might take a couple of weeks to cut that together. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but uh, it's going to be fun and interesting. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, you know, last week here has been very, very busy. We've had, you know, of course, uh, the whole Black Friday, like after Thanksgiving, we, we take time off for our team. We had a very, very skeleton crew here on Friday who rocked it. Um, but we were running all kinds of deals and stuff through Black Friday, a whole Cyber Monday weekend, that whole thing. Um, you know, really, really successful for us here. Relatively smooth. We had a couple of snags whenever there's that high of volume and that much going on, especially in combination with our team taking off a lot to be with their families. It always is the potential for there to be a lot of drama on our end, uh, but it was relatively stable. We had some website issues and stuff like that, but there was relatively behind the scenes and we worked them out quickly. Uh, but uh, yeah, all, all is, is well on the Goulet front. Our team's been working really hard. We set a record for number of orders shipped in a single day on Tuesday. Uh, so the team is really pumped. Now they're kind of like a puddle on the floor a little bit, but <laughs> um, they're rocking hard. Morale is super high here. So it's just really exciting. It's an exciting time for us. You know, being in the retail business, this is like our, our uh, this is what we prepare for. So um, it's really exciting. Uh, and then uh, we got some other stuff going on. Let's see here. Oh yeah, we're gonna have, um, so a lot of you, of course, you're thinking about the holidays and shopping and stuff like that. Um, so we're posting a blog this week about um, our holiday shipping deadlines. So basically like, you know, we get information from FedEx and, and uh, USPS that say, if you want it to be delivered before Christmas, it needs to be shipped out on this day with this shipping method and all that. And we've broken all that down and put that into a blog post. So if you have any questions about that or thinking about any ordering anything from our site, we had that in that blog post. So you can check that out. Uh, we've had some sweet products that have been coming in recently too. Um, one of which is uh, one of my newfound loves, which is the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. And uh, I put this one on my Instagram a little bit. Uh, I've been kind of infatuated with it. I got it inked up right now with Diamond Marine. So I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see some of the deets on this one. Really cool looking pen. Uh, the material is, it's this dark teal color and it's got this really kind of tight swirl um, that, you know, kind of looks like a burl wood. If you know, I've got a woodworking background, so uh, maybe that's why I find this particular pattern to be so appealing. Um, and the way that this works, you know, whenever you see them in pictures, you see it like 
just the color is exploding and lights bursting off the pen and it does that in a certain rotation and then you know when you rotate it here it's a little bit darker right so depending on how the picture is taken I know when you see pictures from sites like ours you're gonna see more of this if you see kind of real life pictures of people that are showing it in their like fluorescent lit offices you might see it a little darker like this the the lighting has a lot of you know variation on this pen and the way that that is is because they cast this resin into sheets and then they kind of cut it into rods and then when it's turned down you know the part of the sheet where the light hits it where it would normally be from the top um, looks really shiny like that and from the side it looks darker so when you turn it into a round object that means it's gonna be like really shiny and one section you turn it 90 degrees it's gonna be darker turn it 90 degrees again it's gonna be shiny Nine degrees again, it's gonna be darker. So that's why, you know, it's it's basically impossible to have a material unless it's wrapped with some kind of reflective material. It's almost impossible to have it be shiny like this all the way around the pen. Um, so I, I recognize that and realize that because I've got this kind of like, you know, pen turning, pen making background. Uh, but that might be something kind of curious to you. So I just thought I'd explain that a little bit. Uh, but either way, it's an incredible material, really deep in color. The only, only thing that I wish this pen had is an ink window, but I can get over that. You know, I use a Visconti Homo Sapiens pretty regularly, does not have an ink window, so I'm used to it. Um, you know, but it is, it's a $520 pen, so it's not super cheap, uh, but it's definitely, it's, it's cheaper than the M800 series pens have been recently. So, um, 18 karat gold nib. Really nice writing nib. It's a little bit soft, but it's not flexible. You know, the M1000 nib is a little bit more flexible, um, but this one is a little softer than the 600, 400, etc. Um, and it's a good size pen. It's got a decent weight to it. If you're familiar with the 400 or 600, it's a larger pen, and it's got more weight to it because some of the internal components, like the piston rod and the mechanism that hold in the piston rod, are all metal as opposed to plastic, and so it gives it a little more heft and a little bit of weight to the pen. Of course, you got your bird on top there. Really nice looking pen. They did a fantastic job with this one. I'm super pleased. It is a special edition, so it's not gonna be around forever. And it's only available in this M805 size. So if you're interested in that, check it out. We have them on our site. Um, we also have gotten in the Lamy Studio in racing green. And I really like this color green too. Very similar in, in color to the teal. Um, you know, a little bit more on the green side, not quite as blue. Um, but this is Lamy's special edition. Uh, that they're gonna have here. They have another one, the Piano Black, that's gonna have a gold nib, uh, which we haven't gotten that in yet. It's gonna be coming any day, but it's gonna be, um, that one is gonna be a regular edition. This one is a special edition. So if you're not familiar with the studio, it's got a metal grip, stainless steel, Lamy nib that's interchangeable with all the other Lamy uh, pens except for the Lamy 2000. Uh, it's postable and it's got a little click when it posts too. So it posts really securely. Very attractive style pen. It's got kind of this propeller clip on it signature to the studio um, and in the past uh, you know few models that they've done with the studio special editions they haven't done one in a couple of years but I think about like the Wild Reuben and some of the other ones they were um, uh, like a shinier kind of almost like a lacquer that was over the metal but this one is uh, more like a sort of a powder coating so it's a matte thing it's like a matte finish um, and it's to me, it's almost a perfect match to something like Jerobon Emerald or Chavor that's like a teal or a green that's got a little hint of red to it. So it's got a little, little bit of a red cast there. I don't know how much you can see that on the video, but to my eye, that's what it's hitting. So fantastic pen, same price as the other stainless steel studios, $76. So you can check that one out. Um, we have them available right now. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, of course, I'll show this one real quick because I showed it before, the Visconti Opera Master Luna. This is a Goulet exclusive that we have that we co-designed with them. Super pleased with this one. They've been uh, pretty popular so far. It's a more expensive pen in the $800 range, so um, I won't push it too hard here for you because I'm probably going to make you cry, but um, beautiful pen. I um, couldn't be happier with the way this thing turned out. The material's awesome. It's got this kind of glitter to it that matches the trim. It's got the enameling on the clip here. Just lots of nice touches. Um, so there's the Luna. Uh, also, another one that's come out recently is the Twisby Eco T. So I know I'm gonna have some questions on this one. I have an Eco here to compare. But the Eco T coming from Twisby, the reason they came out with this one is they wanted something that has a little more prominent triangular grip. Um, you can call it a kid pen, you can call it a starter pen, but basically it's made so that the more prominent triangular grip can 
kind of um, force you to hold the pen in the proper orientation as you write. Because when you're starting out, if you have a purely round grip, you might be inclined to over rotate the pen and not have the nib writing properly on the page. This one kind of forces you to do that. It's not as severe of a triangular grip as say like the Lamy Safari uh, or the All Star, but it is more prominent than the Twisby Eco is. And then to kind of accentuate that as well, they have a triangular cap as opposed to the normal hexagonal cap on the Twisby Eco on both uh, ends. So on the finial on the, and as well as the cap. Uh, the rest of the pen is the same. It's just those accents and then the grip itself. It's really hard with clear pens to show you um, the difference in the grip. Uh, we're probably gonna have to try to do it in photos in the video. It's, uh, it's much more difficult. But uh, the Eco here basically is round. Um, and then it kind of flares up to a little triangularly kind of at the end here. But the Eco T, um, let's see if I can show you. Can you see how there, how it like, you can see it, it's got kind of an edge to it a little bit there. So it actually has the triangular part that dips down onto the grip. It's subtle, but it's noticeable and it's definitely there. Um, this one of course is blue. This is a special edition one, same price as the regular one, just under $30. Um, piston filling mechanism, it's great. I'm a huge fan of the Twisby Eco. Um, and the, uh, the blue accents here are special edition, so they're not going to be around forever. So, um, but I imagine they're going to be coming out with more colors and stuff of the Eco T, just like they do with the Eco. Um, and more on that once I have kind of official announcements there. Um, another pen that I wanted to show you is the Platinum Nice Lavande. I'm going to stay zoomed in awkwardly on my neck. Oh, maybe I'll actually show you the pen. Um, oh my gosh. Come on now. There we go. Okay, so this one comes in kind of this round, like almost like a necklace, kind of like a jewelry box type thing. Um, it's got, uh, so the first 3,000 of the pens have a number out of 3,000 on this card, this little collectible card. So this is a special edition um, card, but they're going to, the pen itself is not numbered. Um, and it is going to be available ongoing, so I understand, but uh, only the first 3,000 will have that number there. So it is a uh, purple demonstrator pen with rose gold accents. And the rose gold isn't like sicky pink gold, it's subtle, um, which I think complements the purple very nicely. And then uh, it's a cartridge converter pen, just like all the other platinum pens. And if you're familiar with the Nice Lilas, uh, or Lila, uh, then it's the same pattern on it. So it has these uh, flutes that are cut into it. Um, very sharp, very crisp, and you can feel, you can definitely feel the texture of those flutes on there. Um, when you're writing with it, you don't really feel it because the grip is, is you know, smooth. Um, but, uh, you know, no, that's basically it. It's got the slip and seal cap on there, so it seals up the pen really nicely. The nibs on the 3776s are gold nibs, 14 karat, but they do write with a little more tooth and they're pretty stiff. So that is kind of a signature of the platinum pens. Um, so we have those available now. You can check those out. Um, price is $228 on those, a little more expensive than the regular uh, platinums. And then I have a couple other things. We, um, I mentioned before, a couple of weeks ago when I shot uh, Q&A, that we had the Goulet uh, calendars. So we, we've we been at getting asked constantly about having calendars. So we took um, and made this one. I showed you kind of the demo one that we had. This is the final version uh, that we have. So we have these available now, uh, just under $12. We are not really making any money on these. I just wanted to make them available for you so that you could um, put up some pretty pictures of pens around your office or your home or whatever you like. Um, so we have those available for you now. Um, we're doing one run of them. I don't know that we're going to reorder. So if you want to get them, you know, they literally like expire. <laughs> so we didn't want to order a ton, uh, but we ordered a fair amount. So you should be good to order, you know, kind of through the holidays. But if you're, they're not going to be available in like March probably, you know. So get on it sooner than later. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to show you was the... Um, new knock pen case color that we have. This is the Sinclair. Uh, and the uh, color here, it's, ca it's called Spa Blue Lime Green, uh, but it is being affectionately known in the pen community as Unicorn Snot, uh, because uh, I guess the pink and the blue combination is kind of known as like the unicorn type color. Uh, a lot of people have referred to it, especially on Pen Addict Slack and in the kind of pen uh, show circuit uh, as unicorn barf 
and <laughs> like the water lily premiere that we had last year uh, a lot of people called that unicorn barf kind of unofficially and i guess now because of the green on the inside it's being called unicorn snot so anyway <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny uh and then uh this the sinclair case it's, it fits a three and a half uh by five and a half notebook in here so like a field note size or lots of rodeos or midoris or whatever and then it's got three pen holder here and then it's got a space in the middle where you could put more pens or notebooks or your cell phone or wallet or something like that so really cool kind of utilitarian thing uh, new color that we have there, so you can check that out. Um, and then uh, some other stuff, let's see here. Field Notes Resolution, I meant to grab one. I don't have it on me, but we have those now. That's the Winter Edition Field Notes. Pretty interesting, you can check that out. And then um, I wanted to give a quick mention about Cursive Logic. So Cursive Logic is the um, cursive kind of handwriting uh, uh, lesson notebook thing that we have. Some slight tweaks to it. You can check the website for updates. Really, really slight tweaks. Um, basically, uh, Cursive Logic is looking to do a lot more in schools, actually have like instructional kind of uh, programs for schools. Um, and that is kind of their primary market. So they had two different products. That was the one that we had, which was the original one, uh, that did not have it broken down into sort of like a lesson plan. It was just at your own pace. The one they have now, this newer version, is replacing the old version. We, we were carrying the old version, and then once they ran out, they are now only making the newer version. Very, very similar format. Better quality paper, which is nice, um, but also it's going to be broken out by day. So it has like a kind of more of a structure to it, which is also, you know, it could be good for you, or you could just go at your own pace. But that's the intention is for to, uh, to be able to use it in school. So we still have it available. It's a couple dollars more because of paper grade and just stuff like that. But... Um, you know, just worth a mention there. And then some other stuff that's going to be coming in the works. Um, Lamy Ions should be coming very, very soon. I think next week. Um, been delayed and delayed and delayed, but um, I believe they're going to be there. We're not quite getting everything that we ordered, so I don't know what the availability is going to be like. It depends how well they're received. It's always difficult when something is delayed this much because on one hand, it can create more awareness and a lot of people can be more interested in it, or it can be delayed so much that people then lose interest. And so it's like really impossible for us to gauge demand when something gets delayed, you know, months and months. But either way, we're going to have it available as much as we can. Um, and then the Lamy Studio Piano Black, I mentioned that already, but that should be coming probably with the ions, um, as well as restocking on spare nibs, which I know we've been out of for forever. Um, Lamy just changed distributorships a couple months ago, and they're still kind of working that out. Uh, and then we're going to have probably early next week, mid next week maybe, we're going to have uh, the winter edition of the Edison Nouveau premiere. So that is something that normally we look to have a little bit later in the month of the season that we're doing it. But obviously with holidays coming up and stuff like that, we don't want to release something on like the 21st, you know what I mean? So we are going to come out with it a little bit early. Edison's been great in working ahead uh, with us on that. So we'll announce what that is for next week. We're pretty excited about it though. We're doing something a little different, doing something a little different this time. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out. Um, and then um, for any of you that are interested in Paniter, the Paniter avatar, we're getting the gray one, the fourth out of the three that we uh, had missing. Uh, that one's coming in, the anthracite color. Um, it's a beautiful gray color, so if you're interested in that, we'll have that in. And then I think we might be getting the Numiki Yukari Royale Frog, which is the pen that I showed you, and the Makie pen I showed you a couple weeks ago. We'll have that one as well. So lots coming in. There's a whole bunch of other stuff too that I'm not even going to mention yet because the dates are so up in the air. But there is, I tell you, December is going to be, it's going to be stacked. It's going to be busy. Uh, so lots of exciting stuff going on. And uh, let's get to the questions this week, shall we? <clears throat> so pen and writing questions. This is from Am Shorb on Instagram. I've heard that you can use the Twisby Mini Nib units on the Classic. Is this true? Um, yes, and I meant to grab a Classic. So I'm going to have to, um, in the Mini. Dang, I completely forgot to grab some stuff. So hang on real quick while I grab some of these things. This is what happens when I, I'm shooting Q&A in the morning here. And normally I don't. So give me a hot second. Don't mind my booty. That's a back mini. Oh boy, where is my mini? Here it is. Boom. All right. Sorry about that. Try to be a little more prepared, but it's a good figure. All right, I got a classic and I got a mini right here. So the short answer to your question is kind of both yes and no. Yes, they have the same size nib on them. 
Uh, so theoretically, you can switch and swap in between the two. I'll kind of zoom in a little bit and show you since this is a little more detail of a question. Um, but you can see here the nib is the same. It's a number four size nib. And uh, the feed setup is very similar. Um, so yes, you can do that. However, um, the nib unit itself is different. It's a different length. It's a different you know, setup altogether. Um, so I'll go ahead and try. So you can uh, technically screw it in there, but it doesn't work. Like it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't fit. It's like a completely different pen um, on the grip itself. So in order to do it, it's kind of a hack, right? So if I take the nib units, and I'm going to have to try not to get them too mixed up here, and actually remove it, like I can pull the nib unit out of the housing on the mini, but the classic is a little different setup. So the classic, I can pull the shroud off the grip there, um, but you can see here the housing is a different, it's a little bit different of a setup on the two. Oh, sorry, I'm out of frame. There you go. It's a little bit different of a setup on the two. Let me see if I can remove this thing too. I thought that I could. Mm. Okay, not super easy. So basically, long story short, you, it's not quite as simple and straightforward uh, as you would think uh, in order to get these two off of there just because of the, the setup that it has on the two grips. So really, if you want to be able to do this, you're pretty much yanking the nib out of the unit and then swapping them between the two, which you can totally do. Um, but if you're doing that, you're like treading outside of probably Twisby warranty territory because now you're actually hacking apart your pen if you screw anything up in the process. Of course, if there's any actual functional defects, of course, Twisby stamp behind their stuff like really, really well. Um, but it's not quite as easy as, oh, you just buy, you know, if you have a classic and you want a different nib unit, you just buy a mini nib unit because they are available and you can just put it in there. Mm, not quite. Um, so you can buy, you know, a, a nib unit here and you can yank it out of here. It is possible. Uh, and it's also possible to screw it up. So let me see if I can get the classic. Okay, it's not too bad. No, nope, I just dropped it, but there you go. So um, one thing that can happen, I've actually done this on my personal one. They're really tough when they're first in there and I've pulled these out before, but the feed on these, you can see here, I'm missing a feed post on my classic because one time when I pulled it out, um, I didn't pull it straight out. I kind of like went like this as I pulled it out and snapped the post right off the back of the feed. Now it still writes, it hasn't like ruined the functionality of it, it's just not going to perform as well as consistently probably um, as it would if it had that post on the back. So um, you gotta be aware of those kind of things. If you end up snapping off the post, it's not the end of the world, but just be aware that that is a potential thing that can happen when you're pulling these out of here. Also the fins on the um, Twisby feeds here can be a little bit soft sometimes. So if you are pulling too much on those fins, you can actually bend them. And I've done that plenty of times on my own Twisbees as well. So yes, technically, like this is my nib. Oh my gosh, I just dropped it. This happens. <laughs> happens to the best of us. So this is my nib that was on my mini and I'm now putting it on the feed that I had uh, for my uh, classic. Boom. Do I have that seated in there right? Nope, sure didn't, there we go, boom. So yes, it can be done. You gotta hack it a little bit and then you gotta be aware that you're kind of going outside of Twisby's you know, natural uh, turf and uh, just be aware that that's what's happening, but you can make it happen if you are so bound and determined. Cool, all right. Let's see here, next question is from Don L on Facebook. Which pen brands need a modified bulb syringe to clean or flush the pen. Okay, dang it, I'm now realizing I forgot to grab my bulb syringe too. Be right back. And I need to grab some of the pens that use it too. So let's see here. Da, 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 da. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so to answer this question for you, it's not a whole ton of them, and I'm not gonna be able to give you an answer for like every single pen that you're gonna need a modified one. Um, it's really just kind of a couple that come top of mind for me. 
Uh, it's not that many of them, but some of them are the more popular ones. So you may want to give this some, some consideration. Um, one of them that's really popular that benefits a lot from having a modified bulb syringe is the Pilot Metropolitan. Um, now it is a cartridge converter pen, so you can totally use a bulb syringe to clean it out. That's one of the things I like the most about cartridge converter pens. Um, but the challenge that you have with this one, and I'll show you, uh, try and close up. I'm really zooming in out a lot today. Uh, but what you have going on here, and I'm going to really try and get in there so you can see what's happening. Yes. So you look inside of there, there is the post inside of the grip of this pen. So that post is going to help to secure the cartridge inside of there or your converter inside of there. But the challenge you're going to have if you use a bulb syringe like so is when you go to insert it in here, you see how it's not fitting flush because that post is, oh boy, this is all backwards and reverse for me. So that post is preventing this from fitting in here. Now, me personally, half the time I'm lazy and I'll just kind of take my fingers and wrap it around it and then still just force it all through and it's kind of close enough. But what tends to be more effective is, okay, I'm a little too close now. Um, what tends to be more effective is, you can see my gross fingernail there is uh, I actually cut the end of the bulb syringe off. So you can see here's an original, here's a modified version. I cut it off and then I just use it to fit around the outside of the pen, like so. I put it all the way up to the threads so that the threads give it a little more grip and then I can go like that. Or you can bulb syringe convert your pen and you can have like a two ounce ink capacity while you write, that's pretty cool. Problem is you can't cap it. So you gotta write you know, two ounces worth of ink in one sitting, but it's totally doable. Bit of a joke there. Uh, but anyway, so that tends to work really well for the Pirate Metropolitan, which is a very popular pen, so I think it's worth mentioning there. Uh, another really popular pen that it can be helpful for is uh, Lamy pens. So Lamy All Star Safari. Now you can make these work. Oh, I don't even have a nib on this one. Go figure. Um, so you can use a regular bulb syringe on these ones. The challenge is because it has these um, kind of extended posts right here. In order to get a really good seal, you have to kind of push it hard in there, and then you start to spread these out a little bit, which over time it could weaken it, because it's, you know, it's plastic, uh, it could weaken it a little bit and not grip as tightly on your converter, because the converter has these little posts right here, um, and that's part of the cool thing about Lamy, but the challenge is you have to really jam it in there, and then you put the pressure through, so it can work in a pinch, but it might be a better strategy to end up doing the modified version so that you go over top of it and then you're not weakening those posts and then you can do the same kind of thing. It's basically the same diameter as the Metropolitan so you can kind of just convert one version of it here. Another brand that's not as popular, we don't even carry this brand anymore, but Schaefer, we carried it for a number of years. Um, Schaefer with their converters, this is a Prelude, um, but a lot of their cartridge converter pens are kind of this way. So their, their cartridge converters um, it's weird. It's got like a little post right here. It doesn't fit quite the same as other ones. And they have other pens too. This, uh, this is a Prelude, but which has a bit of an area here where you can kind of do it, but it's so wide. Um, <laughs> my converter's rolling away. It's so wide that I can't really get a good seal on there. So that one tends to be better uh, fitting it over top. It's a little bit wider, so you got to really kind of jam it in there, or you modify a different one and cut it to an even bigger opening. Um, but some of the other Schaefer pens that I've used over the years, the VFM, um, Prelude, um, and other ones like that, the other model is failing me right now. Um, but Schaefer. Some other ones, you know, it's interesting because I mentioned Pilot with their Metropolitan. And uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I'm sure you're sick of looking at my neck. And I need to shave too. <laughs> Um, some other ones that are, are more interesting, uh, like from Pilot, for example, is something like, you know, the Vanishing Point. You think like, oh, the Vanishing Point, that one probably needs to have some kind of modification because it's a completely different kind of nib unit setup. Well, no, they still do the post thing that they have on the inside of the Metropolitan, but because it's so long, uh, the shroud, I guess, on the outside of the nib unit is so long, it actually works really well just with a regular bulb syringe. And it's the same kind of thing like with the... Um, uh, Pilot E95S. I got all these pen parts everywhere. It's like a pen graveyard on my desk right now. Uh, same thing with the E95S. It's got the converter. It's got it in there. It's still got the post inside, but because there's so much room, 
uh, in distance there, it doesn't actually hit that post inside and you can use a regular bulb syringe on it. So it really depends. It's not even just like universally across brand. It really depends by model. But the ones that I mentioned, really the Metropolitan and the All-Star Safari Vista, um, they're the ones that are that probably could benefit the most from it. Not a com it's not a 100% essential thing, so you know don't feel like you have to buy two and modify it if you don't want to. But once you modify, you can't go back. So if you do want to modify one, you're going to want to get another one just because most pens are going to end up using the regular version. But the modified version can be a handy little tool uh, sometimes. So hopefully that helps you out there. All right. Next question is from About That Book on Instagram. Hi, I'm new in fountain pens and coming from the dip pen hobby. I was wondering if there is a right way to hold the fountain pen like dip pens. By the way, I love the videos in the blog. I'm learning so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, yes. There is, well, okay, yes. There is like a more ideal way. People hold their pens all different kinds of ways. But, you know, if you want to get most ideal of your writing circumstance, there is kind of a proper way to hold it. It's not quite as particular as, uh, you know, dip pens, especially if you're using like an oblique, you know, offset nib holder. It's not going to be quite as specific as that, but it's going to still be somewhat picky. Um, you know, fountain pens are a little more forgiving than dip pens, uh, but maybe not quite as much as, say, ballpoints. So um, the ideal, kind of the ideal hand position is to have the pen at about a 45 degree angle. And of course you can modify it a little bit up or down, but uh, usually the more up you hold it, the drier the pen's gonna write. The more down you hold it, the wetter the pen's gonna write. Some of that depends on the tipping material and the way they grind it and stuff like that. But um, you know, you wanna hold it about a 45 degree angle. Generally speaking, the proper hand position is to have a three finger grip, to have you know your thumb and your forefinger on the top of the pen and then your middle finger on the underside of the pen uh, and kind of supporting it just like so. So you have kind of a triangle thing. Now there's plenty of people that have a four finger grip and other various modifications and that's fine, but I'm just telling you kind of what's generally most ideal. You know, have the nib pointed straight up towards the sky. You don't want to rotate it a lot because then it's not going to write properly. In order to get the capillary action to flow properly through the nib, you need to have the pen so that the nib is facing up and the feet is always facing down. You can flip it over and write with it upside down as a kind of a hack, um, but this is really the proper position to have. Uh, and then beyond that, it's really just a matter of your posture and, you know, how you're actually writing. So you want to, you know, it's kind of like when you're doing calligraphy, it's not that dissimilar. So you want to have your elbow at about, an, about a 90 degree angle. Um, you're using, there's all kinds of different methodologies, but the one that I pres 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 prescribe, ascribe to the most is um, kind of the like American cursive style, which is, you know, I have Michael Soles, um, he's a master pen and he's got a book on American cursive writing and, you know, Spencerian and stuff like that. And he, he kind of likes to do a, it's not a whole arm, like where you lock the wrist and then you just write with your arm. That If you're doing a lot of calligraphy, that can work, but most of us are not writing enough to build up the fine tuning of those large muscles here. Um, whereas most people who are writing with pencils and ballpoints and stuff like that, their arm is planted and it's all wrist and finger movements, which is why your hand cramps up. So he, he touts using a kind of a blend of the two. So you do some whole arm movement and some uh, wrist movement as well. And that I find tends to work pretty well with me. Um, of course, like anything, the more you practice, the better you'll get. But basically you kind of plant your uh, heel of your hand on the paper, have your pen at about a 45 degree angle. Um, you know, ideally, left-handed is a whole different scenario, but ideally left-handers, you know, writing at a 45 degree angle, angle under writing. Um, a lot of people are side writing and hook writing and stuff like that. But uh, generally speaking, you want it at a 45 degree angle from your writing line. So if I have, you know, a sheet of paper and, uh, you know, the lines are here, I want my pen at about a 45 degree angle here as I'm writing across. So 45 there, 45 up from the paper this way, and then um, that tends to work pretty well. And then, you know, a lot of people will turn the page too, you know, to different degrees. So whatever feels comfortable for you, but you want to have a little bit of slant to your letters. Um, and the logic behind that while you're slanting, if you know for calligraphy, you know this well, if you have things kind of straight up, 
it makes it kind of stilted and hard to read. And if it's slanting too much, it's like it's falling over. So you want it slanting, um, I forget the degree angle that's ideal. I think it's around 30 degrees or something like that. And that actually makes your letters while you're writing, it kind of visually makes you want to kind of continue reading. It has like a good kind of flow and movement to the letters themselves. And the more consistent you have that, the, the better your handwriting looks, right? So anyway, that's kind of it. So it's not super complicated, but you know, the better posture you have, the longer you're gonna be able to write. And then having your pen more in that 45 degree range kind of all around is gonna generally give you the best performance in writing with a pen. Now everybody's got a different style and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can modify it however you see fit, but that's kind of the, the good place to start. And whenever you're saying like, oh, my pen's not writing well, that's one of the first things to check is to make sure you have it kind of, kind of in a standard position there, because that's usually how the pens are tuned and ground and stuff like that to be able to write in that position. The other thing that I wanna say specifically with fountain pens is, and it's probably similar with dip pens too, but um, you know, anybody who's coming over from kind of the ballpoint world, you're used to holding your pen, kind of at a very steep angle. You're probably used to writing with your fingers really close and you're used to like bearing down on it because those pens don't write that well. So you gotta really bear down on it and just grill that into the page. Fountain pens are not that way, just like dip pens. Um, you really, just the weight of the pen itself should be enough to get the pen to write. And so you're not wanting to give additional pressure. If you do that, that's gonna cramp up your hand. That's going to um, put pressure on the nib. It might cause flow issues over time. It's gonna cause your, over time, you're gonna wear out your nib a little bit, spring it, and it's gonna write um, wetter. And then you might even, if you write too hard with it that way, you might even bend the nib and ruin it. I've seen that happen before too. People that just don't know that much of you know kind of how to write with these pens they end up writing too hard and then of course it starts to write dry and and because the nib is all messed up and then when it's writing dry they press even harder because that's what you do with ball points um so that could be the thing so don't over rotate the pen don't write with hard pressure and keep it on the 45s and i think you'll be in good shape all right tim held me green on time held me green whoa time held me green on instagram got kind of uh you know Interesting there for a second. Uh, question is, is the Invincia a good pen? I've seen mixed reviews and hubby wants one for Christmas. Dag on it, I picked a terrible week to forget all of my pens at the beginning of the thing. All right, let me grab an Invincia. Hang on, hang on. On a verde. This is why I keep all of my pens uh, right at the ready here because you never know when you're gonna be a dingbat and forget them all. Okay, so here's an Invincia. This is an Invincia Deluxe, technically with the rose gold trim. So uh, Invincia is kind of a cigar style, torpedo style, whatever you want to call it. Um, metal grip section, which not everybody loves. So that's one thing you got to take into consideration. It's a big pen, it's a heavy pen. Uh, tends to be a little bit more of a masculine appeal to this pen, partly because of the weight and the heft. and. Uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of like a boardroom pen sort, right? Um, it's, it's more visually kind of impactful as a pen. Uh, now, as far as if it's a good pen, so yes, I do like this pen. The nibs do tend to write a little bit dry. That's all I'm gonna say uh, as kind of a caveat there. Um, because, you know, and I've given this feedback to Monteverde and, you know, they're working on it, but still they tend to write uh, just a little bit dry. So that's something to be aware of. The stubs tend to be a little more popular. Um, but uh, some of the extra pines and stuff can be a don't dry, you know, and you can read the reviews. I definitely recommend you read the product reviews um, to see what people's kind of at home experiences with these pens. Um, fit and finish on these tends to be really good, very impressive visually. Um, it can be a bit much if you're doing long writing sessions uh, because of the weight. So that would be kind of my only thing. I think if it's something that your husband wants as a desk pen or something that, you know, he's not necessarily writing long novels with them, but if he wants them, you know, to grab for a meeting and he wants to be able to um, kind of have it uh, just at the ready and have it as uh, kind of a visual presentation, I think it looks fantastic, especially if he's into kind of that carbon fiber look. Um, I would highly recommend it. So, um, and then, you know, because of the, the, because of the dryness of the nib thing, that's my only kind of thing that's saying like, yeah, this is a freaking you know, no brainer. Um, with that, let me say, Monteverde does a really good job of standing behind their stuff and, and so do we here. So if your husband uses it and he has any kind of an issue with it, both of us will stand behind that really strongly. So I think if he finds it appealing, you know, it's, it's been Monteverde's kind of flagship pen for probably 
10, maybe 12 years now at this point. It's been around a while. So they've done all different styles and stuff like that. Some of the styles that you may see out there on the internet are not available anymore because they come out with new stuff all the time and kind of discontinue it. But the Invincia has been one of their longest running models of pens, I think, for some time now. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been that way for a reason. So I think as, as Monteverdi pens go, it is one of their most popular uh, kind of you know, flagship products. So it's definitely worth uh, a serious consideration. And I would urge you to consider it, especially if your husband is that interested in it. I think you'd be really happy with it. Cool. Next question. This is from M. Mulvey on Instagram. Will the new Lamy Ion nibs be available for separate purchase? Okay, so the Ion, I don't have one to show you here visually. I might have a picture to like, maybe Andy can slap one over top of here. The Ion nibs, they're, from an aesthetic standpoint, they're different than the other stainless steel Lamy nibs, but they'll still fit on this, the pens the same way. The feed setup and everything is the same. So um, you'll be able to swap those nibs in and out. So you, you may be thinking to yourself, if I want a replacement Ion nib, to keep that same look, or if I want to take an Ion nib and put it on my Safari, why not? Um, you can do that, they are swappable. As of this time, I am not aware that they're gonna be offering the Ion nibs separately off of the pens. Um, that is just my answer. So uh, when I'm there in Germany, I can ask them for sure if that's something that they plan on doing, or um, I'm sure some of it is they're gonna see how popular the pen is and it might be something they offer, but because it's purely an aesthetic thing, uh, that's the difference there. I imagine it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for them to wanna go through and add those SKUs and go through worldwide distribution of these extra nibs uh, just for that, but I don't know. I don't know. If it's a, something that we could kind of special order and get, I might be interested in doing that if there's demand for it. So I'm curious to know if other people are interested or what. Um, so my short answer is I don't think they're planning on doing that. My long answer is I can try to find out more. Um, but worst case, you can still use the regular Lamy stainless steel nibs on these pens or the Lamy gold nibs for that matter. They'll also swap on there. All right, this question is from Christopher, Christopher F. on Facebook. I'm thankful that you took the time to do your fountain pens for newbies, next level, and gold nib videos as they were contributing factors for me getting into the hobby. I'm curious though, would you be willing to do an advanced level video? Well, I don't know. I've done so many videos. I think I'm just gonna stop. I don't know, what do you guys think? Kidding, oh my gosh. Um, no, yeah, I'm glad you love the videos for sure. Like I wanted to do Fountain Pen 101 and these next level and you know, Fountain Pens for newbies and all that kind of stuff because you know, really the whole inspiration for doing these videos comes from two places. One of them was from my own experience of not knowing anything about fountain pens and going through so much agony trying to figure out the answers to these simple pen questions that I had along the way. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been a newbie now at this point, right? I mean, it's been eight, eight years, eight and a half years since I first started using fountain pens at this point. And um, given the amount of time that I've spent with pens, I've probably racked up uh, two or three lifetimes worth of experience in fountain pens for what most people would experience with their fountain pens. Uh, so it's kind of been a while since I've been that much of a newbie. So I'm glad I produced those videos earlier on when that was very fresh in my mind. They've been super helpful. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of like next level advanced kind of concepts with fountain pens. Um, they get a little more niche. They get a little more, um, you know, challenging to frame it up properly because there's so many different ways that you can go when you're talking advanced stuff. You know, there's some people that get really interested in like vintage things or flex pens or, you know, different materials or all different kinds of things. I definitely think it would stretch me a little bit to go deeper on some of the more advanced topics um, because so much of the focus around here has been on getting new people into the fountain pen hobby. So it's kind of a I'm not going to say it's a newer phenomenon, but it's it's definitely a um, a newer kind of uh, interest that people have had in some of these more kind of advanced topics. You know, certainly I could get more into you know how nibs work, um, different like nib adjustments and things like that as I learn more of that stuff because I am seeking that kind of information out. Um, in 2018, uh, doing different things with different materials as I meet with manufacturers and I go to Lamy and I get deeper, much deeper knowledge on design and kind of the industrial engineering and aspects of the pens there. I would love to share more of that kind of stuff 
as I learn it. Um, so I'm, I'm really intrigued in doing that. It's difficult because I learn bits and pieces and then I have to like really go deep and research and dive in and that information sometimes is not super readily available. So it will stretch me a little bit, but I'm very interested in doing that. It's just kind of where to start first, right? So I'm very interested. I partly wanted to take this question because I wanted to get your feedback, everybody here, YouTube, comments, Facebook, everywhere. Um, give me some feedback on what type of kind of like advanced pen concepts you would want to see in an educational video format like this. And that's definitely something that me and Andy and the rest of the team can do some research on and try and get you some answers to that more advanced stuff. I said that would be really interesting um, to, to mix in here with some of the kind of new con new newbie content that we put out. Um, some other things too is we've talked very heavily about like redoing some of the old videos like Fountain Pen 101, consolidating them a little bit, you know, maybe going deeper on some aspects of it or even like a Fountain Pen 102 or 201 or 301 or whatever, uh, you know, just kind of building off that concept. So we're, we're still kind of rattling that around. We don't know exactly how we should structure that yet, uh, but I think it's worth pursuing and I think we have interest in it uh, on our team as well as from you all. So uh, I think that definitely in 2018, we'll look to do some of that kind of stuff. I gotta let, Andy hasn't been here a, like a week practically. <laughs> I think this is her sixth day here. So, you know, she's uh, diving in the deep end here. I think we've already shot three or four videos together. So um, go figure. Uh, that's just diving on in, right? So uh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. We're gonna have a lot of good stuff coming. These ideas are great. Um, and, and now just realizing I talked to you about like the two aspects of um, what it is that fuel these videos. And I've only mentioned one of them. So I'm glad I remembered. Um, one of them is kind of my, my own experience like I talked about. And the other one is uh, feedback from you all as um, not only fountain pen, you know, people in the community, but literally as Goulet Pen Company customers, because, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, uh, unbiased here. There's an inherent bias. I'm a retailer. I sell the products that I talk about, never try to hide that fact. But, you know, I try to be honest and straightforward in my approach with everything. So there's definitely an aspect to uh, this as like a customer service kind of thing. If you all are asking for a lot of information from me and from my team and we're hearing the same questions over and over again. How does this pen write? How does that pen? Da, 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 da. What's a good flex pen? All these kinds of things. It is prudent of me to talk about that stuff in video form so that then you can be empowered with that information and then you have that knowledge in your brain and you can watch it in a video format and you don't have to go out of your way to contact our team during our office hours and all that kind of stuff. You can get that information wherever you want, whenever you want. Um, so there's an, there's an advantage there to doing that. So it's based on my own kind of intuition and experience and also based on your feedback as our audience, as our customers, and just as general people in the pen community. So we take all that, mash it together, and then come up with these videos, right? Like that's where Fountain Pen 101 came from. It was, man, okay, I'm, I, I went through so much pain to experience uh, the knowledge and gain the knowledge that I had in fountain pens. And then, you know, there's such a great way for us to service new people in the pen community by putting this information together into one kind of series of videos. Boom, that's where it came from. Uh, certainly, we're going to be thinking about the same kind of things uh, for videos moving forward. So um, I'm open to all suggestions that you all have, as well as we'll be thinking about ourselves, of course. All right, and then last question that I have for this week, this is an ink question from Lindsay B on Facebook. What is up with gray inks? I'm a recent fountain pen addict and I've noticed a ton of varying levels of gray inks. Is the color brought by artists or is the color bought by artists or do people actually want that look as they write? I would think people would want to shift away from a graphite kind of look since they're using a pen unless they're doing art. Thanks for your videos. I've binged a probably good 90% of them. Wow. 90% of them, Lindsay? Wow, I'm honored. Seriously, I'm honored to have that much of your attention, and uh, that's really cool. Also, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so you probably know uh, my voice pretty well, and you could probably answer this question just as well as I could if you watched that many videos. Um, no, it, it is interesting. The whole I think the reason, you know, Lindsay, that, it, that this is coming up is because of the interest in Diamond Earl Grey that just came out on, uh, you know, from the Reddit community. There's a fountain pen subreddit that uh, is very active, very vibrant community. We love you all there. I don't post there as much. Rachel is really known more in that community there. Uh, but uh, that, uh, that subreddit community uh, basically voted on a color. They were going to do an exclusive color uh, through Diamine, and they 
uh, voted on Earl Grey, and that was the color they came up with. So there was just it was just an inherent interest from that community, and I don't think that most of the people on the Reddit community are artists inherently. I don't think. I mean, you're going to have some for sure, but I don't think that's naturally how most people are using pens. A lot of you know, newer um, newer fountain pen users and stuff on Reddit. Lots of students, you know, high school, college students, stuff like that. Of course, it's not exclusive, but for sure. Some of that on there. So I think it's an interesting mix of people there on Reddit. And, um, you know, I think that uh, uh, some of the interest may be artists, but I don't have a 100% explanation for you, but I can say, you know, there's there's always been somewhat of an appeal with gray inks, uh, especially because a lot of gray inks can, can get some really nice shading. So that's where it can look a little bit different than, say, a pencil or something like that. But, you know, you would think that, like, if you, if you go with a pen, you would try to go as far away from pencils or something else that's not a pen as you possibly could. But uh, a lot of people, they really like to get, you know, something that looks either just like straight black, just like they're using a regular, you know, rollerball pen or something like that. Or they want something that looks, you know, kind of graphite, like a pencil. Um, you know, diamond graphite has always been fairly popular. Noodler's Lexington Gray has always been popular too. So there's definitely kind of a, a inherent interest in gray inks, partly because it's a relatively safe color to use. You know, if you're using it at school or work or whatever, and you don't want to stand out a lot or make a big scene, but you really want to be able to write with a nice hefty pen, or you like the mechanism in the pen or, or the appeal, the design aspect of it, whatever it is, you get all the benefits of writing with a fountain pen without, you know, kind of standing out and having to explain to your professor why you're using a hot pink ink or something like that. Um, so I think that's part of it. Um, a lot of it's shading, just the appeal. I do, believe, I do believe there's a lot of people that use fountain pens but don't want to have their writing necessarily look like they're using fountain pens. And that's just, that's, that's just one aspect of the appeal for certain individuals. Uh, neither good nor bad. Um, me personally, I have not used gray inks quite as much recently um, now that I'm thinking about it. I tend to be a little bit more on the wilder color spectrum with some of those. Um, I tend to go more teals, blues, um, and then maybe some of the like magentas and some of even like the more vibrant colors, purples, things like that. Um, but uh, you know, you maybe have kind of inspired me a little bit. I have, I've not inked up Earl Grey yet. Uh, and I may be interested in doing that. Di graphite has always been one of my favorite ones. So I would say, um, you know, if you're curious about it, not just you, Lindsay, but anybody else, if you're curious about some of these gray inks, some good ones, you can get samples, so you can just try them out. You know, this is, this is exactly the kind of thing where samples are so great. Um, not to just push my own product here, but, but really, like if you, especially if you're buying like a Noodler's Lexington Gray or something, it's, you know, it's a large amount of ink. Um, it can be really, even the diamond, honestly, for like an 80 mil, it's, it's a good amount of ink. Um, so to get uh, a sample, you get to try it out and then you're like, you get enough of a taste of it, a few pages of ink. Uh, of writing where you're like, yeah, this, this gray actually is pretty cool. I would have thought that it would be boring, but it's, there's, it's subtle. I can see the differences in this ink um, from a pencil or something like that, but it won't necessarily scream I'm different, you know, on paper, which some people want something more subtle and kind of understated like that. Um, so I think that if you're interested, the diamond or gray for sure is, has been a popular one, you know, recently because of Reddit. Um, and it was originally going to be an exclusive just on Reddit and Diamond decided to open it up to retailers. So we, we just got in a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be available, whether it's going to be like a new edition forever, but, you know, we've got it for now. Uh, graphite is also a really good color in Diamond's uh, range. Noodler's Lexington Gray is really good. That one also is uh, water resistant, too. So that tends to be really popular for that aspect, too, because there's not a lot of water resistant gray inks. Um, so that one could be there. Um, I really like Diamond, or sorry, J. Urban. 1670 stormy gray so that's a gray but it's got a little bit of gold glitter in it too so it's definitely a little more of an interesting kind of understated but yet totally not at the same time and the glitter really pops out of there because the color of the ink is a little more subtle uh, and then i'm going to throw this one in there too just as kind of an oddball but Nudlu's l lawrence so it's sort of a gray sort of a dark green black kind of an oily color it literally looks like used motor oil on the page um, very interesting colors, not for everybody, uh, but Drew here, uh, you know, our customer care manager, and uh, he's been on you know, several videos and stuff. That's his like all time favorite in color. So um, definitely worth considering as well. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out, Lindsay. Um, I don't have a perfect explanation for you, but I think that pretty well covers my feelings on the matter. Um, you know, next week, the way that things are going to work, I, um, I'm going to be in Germany most of the week, so I'm not going to be able to record a normal Q&A. However, last week, 
I recorded one that's going to be a filler for next week, so it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm going to like take a week off, but I'm going to have recorded one two weeks ago when I had also had taken a week off, you know, and it's just like, whoo-hoo-hoo. So I'll still have a Q&A for you next week. It'll be one that I've already recorded, so I think it'll be interesting for you to see that one. And then uh, once I get back the following week, we'll get back more into a regular rhythm until Christmas, and then things will get jacked up again. But go figure. It's the holidays. This is what happens, right? We're making it happen. Um, anyway, so my question of the week for this week, aside from wanting to know about any of your uh, pen video ideas, of course, um, my question is, what pen do you most regret not acquiring when you had the chance? Where is your FOMO live, right? Um, so uh, this, this kind of just came about to me because we have all these pens like the Ocean Swirl, the Racing Green, you know, I have a Crimson Tide uh, Vanishing Point. Uh, sorry, Crimson Sunrise. Oh boy, I'm thinking of Visconti. Crimson Sunrise Vanishing Point. I'm like, I'm looking at all these pens, and for whatever reason, I tend to find more recently the pens appealing that the ones that I know that are going to go away and not be available forever, I tend to snatch those up. Go figure. Um, so, what pen do you ha have you had in the past that I'll say is no longer available, or you feel is not going to be available by the time you're able to acquire it? Um, that you most regret not moving on. I'm just kind of curious. Maybe I'll bring up a bunch of bad feelings. <laughs> It'll be a terrible idea for me to ask this question, but um, you know, that would be really interested to know that one. Um, for me, oh gosh, I you know, I didn't even think about this one specifically before I did it. Um, oh man, I have to think about it for a second. Nothing is coming to mind, probably because I've bought dang near every pen that I've been interested in. <laughs> I've probably leaned way too much on the other side. Uh, most of the ones that I've passed on, I've been okay that I've passed on. Um, probably the one, I think maybe the one uh, that I missed, oh, I know, uh, the Omos 360. That pen, uh, no, of course I can get them secondhand now, but now Omos is not even around anymore. The 360 was a really cool pen, um, really, really cool pen. It was a triangular pen, uh, and I don't have one, and that one's really cool, uh, and I missed it. Missed it when I had the chance. Um, they were not widely available when we picked up Omos as a brand, so I would have had to buy it even sooner. I just wasn't aware how cool that pen was until it was kind of too late. So uh, that would be mine, the Omos 360. Um, any color, you know, there's some cool ones out there, really, but any of them just would have been cool. So that would be mine. So I'd be curious to know which is yours that you regret not getting when you had the chance. All right, cool. Well, I will um, see you in, uh, you know, a couple of weeks. <laughs> You'll see me next week, but I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, follow me on Instagram, brian.goulet, if you want to check out what I've got going on in Germany. And then, of course, I'm going to share on YouTube and Facebook and everything, uh, Instagram, but... Uh, uh, what, it, what it's been like in Germany afterwards. So I'm pretty excited. First time I've traveled internationally in my life. So hopefully I don't get completely lost and confused and stranded and end up in like a German prison somewhere um, just from being a completely ignorant American. Uh, but I think I'll be okay because it's pretty, pretty well, uh, I'll, I'll be well taken care of while I'm there. <laughs> but who the heck knows? I might get so excited and start wielding pens everywhere and get myself in trouble. No, I'm just kidding. I'll be fine. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this week. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and right on.